Hey y'all, it's Pam with 44 Marketplace and Creative Finishes by Pam and I know I am super late, like 45 minutes late, but I didn't have a good enough Wi-Fi signal at my shop, so I had to pack everything up and come over here to my warehouse and get in the paint booth and set everything back up when I realized I couldn't get the signal to work. But, sorry about that, sorry so late and everything, but I did want to go over this. I am going to be with you guys at 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoons here in Chalk Paint 101, and today I wanted to go over painting kitchen cabinets um, with Dixie Bell Chalk Paint, Chalk Mineral Paint. Okay, so let me go ahead and say, I know a lot of you read the article um, about using chalk paint on kitchen cabinets, and Annie Sloan, or whatever it was, and I just want to go ahead and address that. They talked about using wax. I have never used wax on kitchen cabinets with all the heat and the grease and everything in a kitchen. That just wouldn't be my top coat of choice. Everybody to each his own, but I've been doing these kitchen cabinets for um, almost five years and I've not had a problem, knock on wood. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over with you what I do for my cabinets um, because I have a cabinet job that I've started and part of them are one color and part of them are another color. The island is another color, Dixie Bell Sawmill Gravy. So I kept out a door so that I could do this live today and then it's gotta play catch up with the rest of them. But I wanted to show you, so I'm gonna tilt it down so you can hear my voice, but I want you to look at the cabinet and what I'm doing. And the noise you hear in the background is my ventilation system for my paint booth. So um, if it's annoying, sorry about that, but when you're painting, you gotta have some ventilation. All right, so I'm gonna go over a couple of things with you and I'm gonna scooch over here next to me. All right, so this is your average cabinet door. And um, whether you guys realize it or not, these cabinet doors are about 17 years old and um, cabinet doors are dirty. They are dirty by nature because we put, we touch them, we put our hands on them. We, we do a lot of things. They get little nicks and dings and things like that, especially over a long period of time. They get water on them, a whole lot of things. Don't you like that apron? A friend made it for me. Um, so these have to be cleaned really, really, really well. And I don't mean throw in some Windex on here because I brought this out a lot of people tell me they clean their cabinets with this. That's a no-no. Ammonia doesn't play well with anything, so that is a no-no. I use Dixie Bell White Lightning, and I use these Scotch-Brite pads. Now, this one looks super huge, but I just take scissors, and I usually cut them in half, or sometimes I cut them in fourths, and I keep my Dixie Bell White Lightning in a spray bottle. It is still the spray bottle that I used when I first started six years ago, so it's labeled TSP. But I love the red label. It reminds me what's in the bottle. So I make sure that I have that with me. Um, and it is Dixie Bell White Lightning. Dixie Bell White Lightning is a granular cleaner and it also deglosses. So uh, if you'll notice what my, my door is sitting on, it's a paint twirly by Paintline. And it allows me to spin my doors around. It allows me to really, it's easy to clean my doors and to paint with it. So. I love Paintline's products because I do at least one kitchen a month and the twirly makes it so that my job is easier. I don't have to walk around this door to paint it. So I'm going to show you guys. This is even the back of the door. Can you see everything on the back of the door? I want you to see the front of the door. This is not about anybody's housekeeping. It is about living in a house and that's what it's like. So typically what I do is I start by spraying my pieces really well. Everything that's attached to the wall I do by hand, but I will spray these doors and I like to scrub, scrub, scrub. And I mean scrub, scrub, scrub. You wanna make sure you get in all of the creases and crevices or anything because oils that you leave on this door, um, cleaning products that have been used on this door, and you gotta pop all of these off. You wanna, anytime you do your kitchen cabinets, you want to apply new bumps, and you want to make sure that you get rid of any stickers, any residue, or anything like that. So we're gonna scrub, 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 scrub. Make sure you get in all of these crevices because any oil that you leave on here will bleed through your paint. No matter what you do, it will bleed. All right. 
So now what I do is I take and I wipe mine down. And I usually use shop towels just because they don't leave any lint. And then once I wipe them down, you can rinse them with some clear water and wipe them down again. Okay? But I'm going to show you. You just kind of want to get all of your residue off of here, regardless of how you do it. And you can see there is a lot of dirt on these cabinets. So you want to make sure you get them clean. You want to make sure all of your sticky residue is gone. If, you, if it leaves sticky residue when you pop those bumps off the corners, make sure that you use goof off or something to get it off. And then I'm going to show you before I put any water on this. Can you see now? the parts that's dry, can you see how we've gotten rid of the shine on this already? Because for this to take paint properly, this is a nice solid cherry door, for it to take paint properly, we have got to get it ready to take the paint. So we've got to clean it and degloss it, which is what Dixie Bell's White Lightning does. And when you do it, you have to do both sides, okay? I'm not going to bore you guys with cleaning of the doors, the entire thing and all that. But, I did want to show you guys this. When I go in and I pull all of my doors, I mark everything. So, I have removed all of the hardware, both the hinges and the pulls from this door. And every single door is marked. It is labeled. So, when I pull them out, I pull everything out. I leave the hardware where it belongs. And this one... The hardware, I label the hardware inside the hinges so that it doesn't show once I reinstall it. And I put tape on here. The first thing I do when I do these doors is I'll do the backs of these doors, two coats of paint, two coats of gator hide. Then when I go to the front of these doors, I move the sticker to the back and I do my paint, my gator hide, and glaze if necessary. These aren't going to be glazed. But in the case of this, you'll notice I have labeled it SG2. That is for sawmill gravy. If you're doing multiple colors in a kitchen, you really, really, really want to make sure you cover yourself because I label my doors and drawer fronts one through whatever. This kitchen has about 89 doors and drawers, so you can see how when you're putting them on the rack and you're painting and you're moving them all around, you can get them mixed up. But if when you're labeling, take your time. Make sure you've labeled them what they need to be, so you need, so you know what color goes on them and everything like that. Also, um, if you'll notice, I'm using blue painter's tape. I use a lot of it. If, you're, if you get a good adhesion, you can move that sticker from the back to the front, back to the front, and you don't have to worry about it pulling any of your paint off. Um, if you don't clean these cabinets good and you put that blue tape on there and you start to pull it off, you can pull your paint off. So that's why I tell you, you really got to scrub, 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 and clean. And the scotch Bright pads that I was showing you, they make all of the difference in the world. I mean, they scrub that stuff off. You do not quit scrubbing on those kitchen cabinets until your shop cloth comes off clean. You want to make sure it's nice and clean. So then the other thing you want to do, a lot of people will notice that when you've got these, I'm going to show you this up close. Can you see where these panels meet? Okay. Well, where those panels meet, a lot of people want to caulk that so that there's no gap there. Well, it depends on the kind of door you have. If you have a floating panel in there and you caulk it, over time that panel's going to start moving and it's going to crack your caulk. Even if it says your caulk is crack resistant, I'm just telling you. If that panel is meant to move, don't caulk it. Paint it and then take your little X-Acto knife and go through that gap and it'll move just fine like it was meant to be like it was meant to move. That is just addressing the doors and drawers, okay? When you're going into your kitchen to paint, the first day, I have sad news for you, first day you don't even usually get to put any paint on anything. Um, the first day you should go in and clean, 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 clean everything that's attached to the walls. Not inside the boxes, that's usually not included in um, a standard paint job. Now that's not to say you can't include it, but it is not included. So you wanna clean everything, and then you wanna tape and drape. You're gonna do that first. Before you even start cleaning, the first thing you're gonna do when you walk in there, you're gonna protect all of their stuff, especially if you're cleaning for some, if you're painting for somebody else. 
tape everywhere your cabinets meet the wall, if they meet the ceiling, and a little hint for you where they meet the ceiling, make sure and use the least sticky tape you can get away with. Frog tape, yellow tape is what I usually use because if their ceiling has ever had a leak in it, ceiling paint is a little um, less, less thick. I don't know what the right word is, but it'll pull off very easily. So make sure you use the least sticky tape you can on their ceilings. A lot of the kitchens that I work in, their cabinets go all the way to the ceiling. Um, so you wanna make sure you do that. So you tape, you drape, you cover everything. Cover everything that you can't remove from the countertops, cover their countertops, cover sinks, cover everything you can, because then it makes you so that you can work faster. It seems like an anomaly for what I'm telling you, but it really, really works. Taping and draping, drop cloth, tape your drop cloth in place, make sure everything is where it can't move and all of their stuff is protected. I promise you, you'll thank me later. Then once everything's taped and draped, that's when we clean. Clean, 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 clean. And then we caulk. Now I use paintable dap caulk that dries in 20 minutes, but now you can spray it immediately. So if you do need to do something to the doors that involves caulk, you can spray it immediately, but you have to wait 20 minutes before you can brush it. But my first day, the first thing I do is I go through and I caulk everything that needs to be caulked. Now I'm gonna tell you why I'm saying this to you. Do you see how dark these doors are? These doors are very dark. Everywhere their boxes come together in their kitchen, there's gonna be a little tiny gap. If they have crown molding at the top of their cabinets, there's gonna be a little tiny gap. So if there, anywhere that there's a gap, once you paint these a lighter color, even though French linen is not the lightest color, once you paint these a, a lighter color, every one of those tiny little gaps is gonna show up. So, I'm just telling you that if you don't go ahead and caulk after you paint, you may have to caulk. And sometimes, even if I caulk everything I can see after I put my first coat of paint on, I can see things that I missed. So I'm just telling you, the very first day is all about taping, draping, and caulking. And once you've gotten that done, then you're ready to rock and roll. And because you've got everything taped and draped, you can be so much faster with your painting because you're not worried about going down those little bitty edges. You're not worried about touching their ceiling. You have protected you from yourself because you've got it all set up. But these doors and drawers, what I like to do is I like for my doors and drawers to be on the rack for at least a few days, but usually about seven before I reinstall them because something I wanna go over with you guys is cure time. Water-based products have a 30-day cure time, but that being said, it's not that you can't use them for 30 days. It just means you wanna be a little more careful with them for 30 days. So typically when I reinstall my kitchen cabinet doors and drawers, they've been on the rack a minimum of four days, but usually they've been on the rack for about seven days. And that way when I hand them back over to my customer, I don't have to worry about them being quite so careful because they've already been curing for seven of their 30 days. So they're a quarter of the way into their curing period before they get their doors and drawers back. Another thing to remember is um, when you use Gator Hide, I spray everything uh, as far as doors and drawers go. But if you are using it on your boxes and stuff like I brush, make sure you're using a, I use a damp brush and I brush very light coats. Now I've heard people say that you can't um, put Gator Hide on the same day that you put paint on. Um, I, if that's the way they do it, that's great. But when I do my kitchens, I rock and roll. I mean, I, time is money and I rock and roll and haven't had any problems. But now I go ahead and I apply mine. And usually on that second day, I'm applying at least two coats of paint on everything. And if I have time, I do two coats of paint and the first coat of Gator Hide. But I get at least my two coats of paint done on that first day that I'm painting, so it's actually day two in their house. And then I get the rest of my Gator Hide on everything that's in there on day three. And I let it sit overnight and I go back and I pull it the next day. When you get ready to pull your tape and everything that you've put up, take an X-Acto knife. An X-Acto knife is your friend because you can score where your tape meets your cabinets, where your tape meets your quarter round on the floor, 
everywhere like that, that makes sure you get a nice clean line when you pull that tape up because if you pull it up and you've overlapped too much between the paint and the tape, you can pull some of your paint on, put, pull some of your paint off because it is still fresh paint. It has not had time. You've put four coats on in two days. It has not had time to dry and cure and everything like that. So just a couple of hints for you. Always know that the first day you may not get to put any paint on. Always tape and drape and always, always, always score your piece before um, you, you pull your tape. Because if you'll score those edges before you pull your tape, no nasty errors. You just have nice clean lines when you pull it. So I am going to get this door caught up with all of its friends and relatives that are in this kitchen. And I will be going live on the Dixie Bell page tomorrow night at 8 p.m. It's Monday night, it's my night. And I'm gonna kinda show you a few little things with kitchen cabinets there. And I'm gonna show you the difference between the two colors and explain to you some more about doing kitchen cabinets. And um, I will also be going live on the 44 Marketplace page on Tuesday to uh, from the kitchen so that you guys can kinda see what we're doing. So I hope you enjoyed this little kitchen cabinet tutorial and I will see you uh, tomorrow night on the Dixie Bell page, but I'll see you here next week, hopefully at four o'clock. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.